Hello and welcome to Bay College's online lecture series for Math 105. Uh, this is the second section of 1.7. We're going to talk about unions and how they apply to inequalities. And we're actually going to look at an application problem in the end. And there will be one more corresponding video to 1.7 after that one. And that's going to deal with absolute value inequalities, where it ties both intersection un unions together. But first, let's go ahead and define unions. The union is a statement that says, what solves one or the other? So if we look at two sets of numbers, we have set A, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, and set B, which is 2, 4, 6, 8. And a union, if I ask a union, it says, what is in A or in B or in both? It says, what is all the possibilities? And how we illustrate that is A union B. We use this symbol. It looks like a U. And it union. So a lot of students, they can make that association. They can remember, that's the symbol for a union. And another thing we're going to look at is it also is an or statement. If we look at intersections, we talked about and statements. What's in this one and in this one at the same time? Well, this is saying what's in A or in B. It doesn't matter what they have in common, if they have anything in common at all. We just want to know what's in A or in B. So if we look at this example, well, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 are in A. Some are in B as well. And 6 and 8 are also in B. So if we want to include all the numbers, what's in one or the other, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. No need to uh, repeat the numbers because they have some in common. We just want to know what's in one or the other. And that's why we call the union the or statement. Now we're going to look at a few examples. Um, the first one is set notation, which we discussed in the previous video x such that x is less than negative 6. Let's go ahead and graph that and see what it looks like on a number line. If this is negative 6, x is less than negative 6. That means any value to the left, because it's less than. And I'm going to use my parentheses to indicate it does not include that value. But since it's less than, it's any value to the left. If we look at the next one, x is greater than or equal to 1. And I had mentioned that when we see that equal sign, we're going to use a different symbol. We're going to use a bracket. If this is 1, x is greater than or equal to. The bracket indicates we're including that value. It could equal that value. But since it's greater than, it's to the right. And if we just look at these two graphs, we can see they don't have anything in common. So this is an appropriate place to ask, well, what's the union? What solves one or the other? So if I want to combine these two, I'm not going to find an intersection, but I can combine them using a union. And you notice in the previous video, if you did watch that, you'll see when we had the and statement, the intersection, we were able to write it as a double inequality. Or statements or unions cannot be written as double inequalities. They wouldn't make any true statements. So x is less than negative 6, or x is greater than or equal to 1. Let's go ahead and graph that. Here's negative 6, and here's 1, and we know that x is greater than 1, or including it, or x is less than negative 6. So the only way to join these is to say, well, what's in one or the other? Because they have nothing in common. Well, let's take that information and look at their intervals. If we move over here, we have the interval from the graph. That arrow goes off to negative infinity and to negative 6 that up a bit. So that's our interval, which we just pulled from this graph. If we look at this interval here, it starts at 1 and includes it and continues on to positive infinity. And hopefully we remember that we can't put infinity into a box. We have to use parentheses when we deal with infinities. If you think about it, one easy way to remember it is I cannot put an infinite number of items into a box. So I have to use the parentheses. You cannot include infinity. Now, the or statement, which we are looking for in this graph, how do we combine these two? What's in this one or in that one? Well, it's essentially taking the combination of these two intervals from left to right, least to greatest, negative infinity to negative 6, and 1 to infinity 
but we have to unite them, unionize them, so to speak, because we're dealing with unions. We use that symbol when we illustrate their interval notation. We are uniting this interval with that interval. It says what's in this one or in this one. We'll solve one or the other, and that's why we call it the or statement. Let's look at an example over here. This here, we see the word or. It's saying what's in this one or in that one. It tells us from that statement to go looking for a union. Combine any solution you find. If it solves one or the other, we want to see it. So we're going to use our properties of equality, just as we had done in the past. Subtract 3 from both sides. Divide by 2 to get that x all by itself. Undo the addition, undo the multiplication until we get x isolated. x is less than 3 halves. Let's also do the same thing here. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And then I'm going to divide by negative 3. Be careful. We're dividing by a negative. The signs are going to change. So I have to be consistent and change the signs. So if I divide by a negative 3, this becomes a positive 1. Divide this by a negative 3, it becomes a negative 3. The signs changed, so I change the sign. Now, we cannot write this as a double inequality, but that's OK because it asks for an OR statement. And the OR says, well, what solves this one OR this one? Let's go ahead and throw these on a graph just so we can see what they look like. Well, negative 3 is the smaller value, so we put it to the left. 3 halves is the greatest greater value, so we put it to the right. And now we can go ahead and graph it. This says x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So we use that inclusion there. We use a bracket. x is greater than, well, that says any value to the right. x is less than 3 halves. That says any value to the left. Well, if we just pause for a moment, this looks like an intersection, doesn't it? They have values in common. That's OK. We have to go back and say, what did it ask me to find? What solves one or the other? Well, if I write their two um, intervals separately, negative infinity to 3 halves, that's this statement right here. And this one is negative 3, including negative 3 to positive infinity, that's this statement right here. Since they overlap, what are the solutions? Well, we have that half of the number line, a little bit of overlap, and the other half of the number line. Essentially, we have the entire number line. When you have the entire number line and you're asked for an OR statement, a union, it says, basically, I can put in any value, and it will solve one or the other. And that's the definition of a union. So, we can rewrite it as negative infinity to infinity because it's an OR statement. It could be any of these. If it didn't have an overlap, it would be like the last example where we'd actually have two separate intervals. We join them with a union. But here, we cover the entire number line. So any number will solve one or the other. And a symbol that some of our instructors here use is this right here. This stands for all real numbers. And that's this statement, any real number on our number line. So if you like that symbol, feel free to use it, um, for me at least. Others might, might want you to do it a little bit differently. All right, <clears throat> let's look at this. Here we have a story problem. And I know in any math class, students hate them story problems. It comes with practice. I remember when I first started, I was like, oh no, a story problem. We'll come back to that one last. But here it is, the last one of this uh, video portion. The story problem goes as such. A student has test scores of 80, 90, 82, and 75 in their intermediate algebra class. The final exam counts as two tests. It's worth twice as much as our normal tests. To get an A or to get a B, the student must average from 80 to 89. And the story problem continues on to say, what score does this student need on the final exam to get? a B. So the first thing we should do when it comes to story problems is have a strategy. And the first thing you should do, read the story problem. 
Don't read it looking for any way to solve it. Don't read it for anything but to make sure you understand the English language. Do I know what an average is? Do I know what it's asking me to find? Do I understand the words that are put together here? Then we read it a second time. The second time we read it, now we should set a goal to say, I want to know what information it is handing to me on a platter. What is it giving me? Well, it's telling me some test scores. That's important information. It's telling me that the final exam is worth two of these tests. That's important information. And it also tells me, in order to get a B, we got to be somewhere between 80 and 89. That's important information. So that's what's given. Now, we're going to read it a third time. And that third time, our goal is to say, what is it asking me to find? So we read through it again, and we see, OK, we know the given information. And it's usually the last statement in a story problem. That's a, a key to it. It asks us, what score does this student need on the final exam to get a B? It defined my variable, the score on the final exam. That's what I'm going to call x. So I'm going to think about this, and I'm going to say, this is the hard part we're about to approach. Reading, we all know how to read at this point in our uh, college careers. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to say, all right, let's take this and build an equation. Well, I know from this statement here, because of I, my understanding of the English language, average. Well, that tells me a certain mathematical procedure. And since we're between values, I'm thinking that we're looking for an intersection, because it's saying what's going to be between one and the other value. So let's go over here and take a look at uh, the program that I had already set up here. Or, well, not the program, but the, uh, the whiteboard. And uh, I color coded it a little bit because I had four different color markers. Why not, right? Make it interesting. So I know it asked me to find an average. So from the average here, I say, well, this is one test score, another test score, another test score, a fourth test score, and the final exam. That's my variable that was defined in the problem. But I was also told that the final exam is worth two tests. So it has a weight of two tests. So to find an average, we sum up our values and divide it by the number of numbers. Well, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because this counts as 2. So I'm going to divide it by 6. And I know that this value from reading the problem has to lie between 80 and 89. So I can set it up as my double inequality and go looking for the union. Honestly, this is the hardest part of any story problem is actually building the equation. The solving it, which I've done here already, is the easy part at this level of math. Building the equation is tough, so we've got to spend a lot of time. If you have to read it three times, read it three times. Make sure you understand what the question is giving you, what it's asking for, and how to put it together. What are the keywords that are saying what operations we're going to do? So here, what I did is I just combined like terms. And you know, to simplify the equation. And then I said, you know what? I want to get the 6 out of the denominator, because my whole goal, as stated in the story problem, is find the exam score needed in order to make this a true statement. So now I'm going to get rid of this uh, denominator by multiplying all sides by 6. What I do to one side, I have to do to all sides. And I get this statement right here. 480 is less than 329 plus 2x less than 534. And then I subtract 329 from all sides to get this statement right here, 151 is less than 2x is less than 205. Now, we're almost isolated here. We have to divide by 2, get x by itself. And if I divide this by 2 and this by 2, I get this statement here. Now, one thing about story problems is they're trying to represent a real world example. So we have to think about things in the real world. If we're dealing with a final exam, and we have to assume there is no extra credit, because the story problem said nothing about extra credit, what is the highest possible score that the student could get? Well, that would be 100%. You cannot get more than 100% in the real world, unless you know, there's some other factors that are skewing that data, right? So if we look at this, we just have to say, OK, what's our domain? And I know at some point in your algebra career, you've heard that statement, domain. What are the values that we actually get to choose from? And 100 would be the most. So we're going to change this, and we're going to say the student must score between 75.5 has to be less than x is less than 100. And that is the solution to the equation. And with any story problems, 
Go back, read the problem. Did we find the answer that it was looking for? Well, this is the answer, but we're missing one important thing, and that's units. These are percents. So I'd want to squeeze in some percents here. I'd want to say, the student must score between 75.5% and 100%. And that's our double inequality that answers that story problem. This has been section 1.7, second video dealing with unions. Thank you for watching.